A Davy Crockett nuclear recoilless rifle. During the 1950s, the U.S. Army introduced a wide range of unguided missiles, artillery shells, demolition charges, and other explosive systems that could carry nuclear devices that yielded fractions of kilotons to megatons. But as the Cold War raged on, nuclear devices became smaller and more powerful. The Davy Crockett became the smallest nuclear weapon in the expanding arsenal of the U.S. Army of the early 1960s. In 1957, the Atomic Energy Commission created a lightweight sub-kiloton yield fission warhead that could be used as a frontline weapon. The Army Ordnance Corps had been looking for a nuclear weapon that could be easily carried to the battlefield and used by infantrymen, and after exploring more than 20 delivery systems, the Army settled on a recoilless rifle system called Battle Group Atomic Delivery System. During testing, the weapon earned the nickname Davy Crockett to honor the American folk hero who lost his life at the Alamo. The nuclear device then entered service in May of 1961. The Davy Crockett was a recoilless rifle operated by three soldiers that could also be mounted on vehicles for increased maneuverability and was meant to be used with mortar teams against large confrontations of enemy forces in the combat zone. It also had a 10 to 20 ton yield that resulted in a radiation radius of almost a quarter mile within the impact zone. The weapon was produced in two variants, a light M28 120mm recoilless rifle that weighed 185 pounds and a heavy M29 155mm variant that surpassed 400 pounds. The first had a range of 1.25 miles, while the second reached up to 2.5 miles. The Davy Crockett used a 76-pound M388 atomic projectile carrying a W54 warhead. This warhead weighed over 50 pounds and had an explosive yield of approximately 10 to 20 tons of TNT. Both variants of the Davy Crockett could be launched from a jeep or a tripod on the ground, and when used, four fins popped out to stabilize the projectile. After firing a spotting round to determine the exact distance, the three-man crew inserted a propellant charge and a metal piston down the muzzle. Afterward, they would load the M388 warhead as if it was a rifle grenade. A special switch allowed the crew to select the height of the detonation. The warhead then reached its target at an approximate speed of 100 miles per hour. The Davy Crockett was used by American crews stationed in Germany in case the Soviet Union decided to invade West Germany. Ultimately, only two atomic projectiles were ever detonated, and they occurred during testing. The Army retired them from service in 1971. To this day, some Davy Crockett's can be found in several museums across the United States. Special Atomic Demolition Munition the Special Atomic Demolition Munition, also known as XM-1291 or W-54 bomb, was a man-portable atomic demolition device that was used by the U.S. military from the 1960s until the end of the Cold War. During the rise of the conflict against the Soviet Union, the U.S. began developing lightweight nuclear devices that could be easily transported across the world in case the Communists decided to attack an allied nation. Atomic Demolition Munition, or ADM, entered the Army's arsenal in 1954. The first tests were conducted as part of Operation Teapot in Nevada in 1955. The operation's objective was to create military tactics for ground forces on a nuclear battlefield. Atomic demolition munition was intended to be used as an engineering asset to deny access to the enemy at specific locations and destroy hostile fortifications. The device was to be used by small teams of special operators that could handle it by themselves, then activate the device behind enemy lines and evacuate before the explosion. The smallest of these nuclear devices was known as the SATAM, or Special Atomic Demolition Munition. SATAM was part of a joint project between the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps. Development began in 1960, and the first mobile bombs were delivered in 1964, just in time for the beginning of the Vietnam War. SATAM weighed 150 pounds and used a 60-pound W-54 warhead. It was 12 inches in diameter and 18 inches long and its package included the warhead, mechanical timer, and a fusing and firing system. The portable atomic bomb's body was made of aluminum forgings and molded fiberglass, and the dials were illuminated with tritium phosphor paint for easy reading during night operations. The Navy and Marines envisioned that one Marine carrying the nuclear weapon could parachute from any aircraft into hostile territory near the sea and detonate it with the assistance of an elite team. After setting the timer, the team would rendezvous at sea, where it would be retrieved by watercraft. 
the yield was estimated to be between 10 to 1,000 tons of TNT. Although these maneuvers were practiced several times, Saddam was never used in the Vietnam War or the remainder of the Cold War. The bombs were then retired from the borders of North Korea and Eastern Germany prior to the fall of the Berlin Wall. M65 Cannon Atomic Annie the M65 Atomic Cannon, also known as Atomic Annie by the soldiers, was an American artillery piece capable of firing nuclear warheads at a distance of up to 20 miles. Atomic Annie was the Army's largest artillery gun at the time, weighing roughly 47 tons. Still, it was extremely mobile and could be easily transported by two tractors. The Atomic Cannon was developed as part of the American defensive measures of the Cold War during the 1950s to protect the borders of West Germany, South Korea, and Japan from Soviet threats. After the atomic bombings of Japan, the U.S. Air Force showed its superiority with this kind of weapon, but atomic projectiles had yet to appear in the form of missiles and were still big and heavy bombs. However, the Army was committed to giving nuclear support to its ground units using artillery placed behind the front lines. Picatinny Arsenal was then tasked with creating a nuclear-capable artillery piece in 1949. The result was a 280mm weapon that greatly resembled the Wehrmacht's Krupp K-5 railway gun. The nickname Atomic Annie paid homage to a German K-5 gun used against the U.S. forces during the landings in Italy during World War II. Atomic Annie was delivered to the U.S. Army in 1953 when President Eisenhower took office. The gun was then tested for the first and only time on May 25, 1953 at the Nevada test site. The successful detonation of a 15 kiloton shell at a distance of 7 miles was enough to approve the production of 20 more cannons that would be sent to Europe, Korea, and Japan. Valued at over $800,000 per piece, the Atomic Annie was eventually deployed across the globe. Then, as the development of tactical nuclear missiles escalated, the M65 was rendered obsolete in 1963 and was retired before the Vietnam War started. Nuclear Submarine Rocket The UUM-44 Subrock, or Submarine Rocket, carried a 250 kiloton thermonuclear warhead that functioned as a nuclear depth bomb and was the U.S. Navy's first and only long-range nuclear-armed anti-submarine missile ever developed. The development of this unique rocket originated in the 1950s when sonar technology had significantly advanced and submarines could be detected from impressive ranges that surpassed those of torpedoes. Project Nobska, a 1956 study conducted to analyze anti-submarine warfare, established the possibilities of waging war in the depths of the ocean with nuclear-armed anti-submarine missiles. The missile's development began in 1958, and the first rocket was completed in 1963. It was first placed aboard a submarine permit in 1964. Subrock was launched horizontally from a 21-inch torpedo tube. After the first few seconds, the rocket's solid fuel motor ignited and rose to the surface. The rocket was controlled by four jet deflectors in its exhaust. Upon leaving the water, Subrock accelerated to its target at supersonic speeds. Before reaching the objective, the motor section separated from the W-55 nuclear warhead via explosive bolts. The guidance system then redirected the warhead to the water to detonate it. The warhead had a blast radius of 5 miles, and the yield reached 250 kilotons. No enemy missile could survive the blast. Over 300 Subrocks were produced between 1965 and 1970, but fortunately for the Soviets, None of them were ever used in combat, and were retired when the Cold War ended. Mark 45 Torpedo The Mark 45 Anti-Submarine Torpedo, or Aster, was another U.S. Navy attempt at arming itself with nuclear weaponry that could be used for combat at sea. Like the Subrocks, the Aster missiles originated in the Project Nobska study of 1956, and production of this nuclear torpedo began in 1959. Aster torpedoes had a 19-inch diameter and weighed over 2,400 pounds. Each was fitted with a W-34 nuclear warhead that yielded 11 kilotons. Its approximate range was 8 miles at a maximum speed of 40 knots, and the torpedoes were controlled by a wire guidance system that had to be maintained until detonation. By 1976, the Navy had produced over 600 Asters before replacing them for Mark 48 torpedoes. They were then fitted with conventional warheads and wake homing guidance systems and sold to foreign navies. The Mark 45 torpedoes never saw action against the enemy. U.S. Navy doctrine concluded that the intent to use them against wolf pack formations of hostile submarines was not as effective as using smaller, faster, and more accurate torpedoes. 
Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of all these peculiar weapons of mass destruction employed by the United States Army.